In the earlier video, we looked at how Qatar has used the 2022 FIFA World Cup for sports washing its image and how it pursues a strategy of using sports to wield soft power. In this video, we will look at the abuse of workers' rights in Qatar. Qatar is a small nation with a population of 2.8 million people. But did you know that about 2.4 million are migrant workers whose labor makes it one of the world's wealthiest nations? 2.4 million. That's around the same population as Hamburg, the second most populous German city. A large part of the migrant labor force working to make the FIFA World Cup a reality comes from Nepal. The country is home to about 30 million people, of which 2.1 million are estimated to be living abroad for work. A quarter of Nepal's GDP depends on the money sent home from Gulf Cooperation Council countries like Qatar. Linking with this, you know, the, our economy, and uh, right now uh, we are we are facing the difficulties in the country, and then uh, we are encouraging them to send, the, you know, their uh, remittance, and it is it is it is supporting the our economy. But uh, we, as a you know, the Nepali, we don't believe that it will sustain longer. So um, we we have to think another way to make our economy our you know more sustainable. However, in Qatar, these workers face issues of safety, wage theft, poor housing, lack of access to basic amenities and bad working conditions. Generally, migrant workers are hired for the work which is considered menial, dangerous and denied by the citizen of the country. Nepali migrant workers have to perform such a work in precarious environment, forced to work in different jobs altogether with the lesser ways than the sign contract, not renewing the workers' visa in time and forcing them to work in illegal status. Extreme exploitation under the bureaucratic shadow, abuse, mental torture, unhygienic workplace and stay, occupation diseases are the some of the common problems faced by the migrant workers. For long, the exploitative kafala or sponsorship system which bound workers to one employer persisted as a repressive force in the Gulf countries. Today, slavery has officially been abolished in nearly every country. Yet, construction workers in the sports industry still often suffer under working conditions that fundamentally resemble those of slavery. They are unsafe and sometimes even life-threatening. Official statistics show that 15,021 non-Qataris have died in the country between 2010 and 2019. The statistics include people of all ages, occupations and causes. The COVID-19 pandemic delivered a double whammy to migrant worker, making a grave situation worse. The onset of the pandemic and subsequent lockdowns meant many workers were unable to get what was owed to them by their employers and many were abruptly terminated from their jobs, cutting them off from their only source of income. Many have lost their lives since preparatory work for the World Cup began. According to an article in The Guardian, 6,500 workers from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka have died since 2010, the year Qatar won the right to host the World Cup. These figures, as well as reports of deaths of those working in the World Cup, have often been refuted by the Gulf country. However, international pressure has drive change in Qatar since the rights abuses came to light. In the next video, we will look at the exploitative kafala system and what the limitations are to the reforms that have been introduced.